Hey guys, Sam here, and welcome back to another FIFA 18 experiment. I want to apologize for how long it took. It shouldn't have taken that long to do this experiment because I've already done this experiment. In the last video, we did what if all the international teams were in a league. We're doing that again because I did ask in a poll if you'd like to see it again to see if we get different results. And 89% of you said, yes, do it again and let's see if we get different results. So without further ado, let's jump into the FIFA 18 experiment. If you have any suggestions for FIFA 18 experiments, leave them in the comment section below. Like the video if you enjoy it, subscribe if you're new, but no wasting time today. Let's get into the video. Right, so these are the nations that will be partaking in today's experiment. They are a little bit different from the last experiment. I did read some of your comments and I thought, let me just add the teams that people wanted to see. Egypt was a big one that people wanted to see. Um, I think Ireland wasn't in it or someone wasn't in it. Peru maybe was or wasn't in it. I'm not sure who exactly I've switched because I did that experiment a couple weeks ago and I've forgotten, but I did read your comments and I tried adding as many as I could. So we've got Argentina, Belgium, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Ivory Coast, Denmark, Egypt, England, France, Greece, Ireland, Italy, Mexico, Netherlands, Peru, Poland, Portugal, Russia, Scotland, Spain, Sweden, Turkey, and Uruguay. Of course, France, the champions in the previous video. Can they go back to back? If they do go back to back, I'm pretty much going to end these international league experiments. But I think if we keep getting different winners, it would be fun to see how many different winners we could have in this experiment. And maybe the first time we go back to back, we'll stop doing these videos. That could be an idea that I could do. But again, similar to last time, I did just let the autofill pick most of the teams. Like I said, I did add a couple that you guys wanted to see. And of course, I made sure the big boys were there as well. So without further ado, let's take a look at what's going on halfway through the season. Which of these nations has put themselves in a good position and which are underperforming? Are France going to do it again? Are they going to dominate again? Uh, <laughs> last time we checked halfway through the season, they were undefeated. So let's see what we could do this time. Let's see if France is going to be that good. Let's take a look at halfway through the season. All right, so here we are halfway through the season and it's Italy at the top of the table, the team that isn't even in the World Cup this year. Italy is ahead of Brazil, who are in second place. Similar to last video, Brazil were in second place halfway through the season. Just one loss to their name and the best defensive and attacking team in the league is Brazil, which I find quite interesting. But Italy do have the lead ahead of Brazil, who are two points in front of France and Belgium, both on 48 points. Belgium also one loss to their name. That is absolutely incredible from Belgium. I think the team with probably the highest potential in terms of their teams, a team that could just do so much damage in this World Cup and the next World Cup, along with, of course, France and Germany, who always have that host of talent. Where is Germany? Okay, uh, I've just realized I've left Germany out of this experiment. That is a bit silly of me because I did double check and made sure all the big nations were in this experiment and Germany are actually not in this experiment. So, sorry to the Germans, <laughs> my bad. We're gonna continue with this one anyway. Well, I'm too invested in it at this point. Let's continue. Uh, Belgium in fourth, Spain in fifth, with Uruguay in sixth, ahead of Argentina. England in eighth, Portugal in ninth, and Denmark in the top 10 as well. Looking a little bit further down below, the teams that you guys wanted to see, including Egypt and Peru, are currently sitting in 23rd and 24th. Peru without a win to their name. Not that I would expect them to pick up a win, but they should be competing with the likes of Egypt, Ireland, Ivory Coast, and even Greece. I'm not sure how Greece exactly is 17th ahead of the likes of Mexico, and even Poland, who in some of my experiments have won the World Cup. Um, I'm not sure how, how Greece are doing so well, but good on them sitting in 17th. Chile, I'd say a little bit underperforming in 14th. I'd like to see them a little bit higher up the table. Netherlands in 12th, not too surprising. But yeah, I don't know how I forgot Germany. But um, I'm, I'm not sure exactly where Germany would be if they were in this experiment. Last time, halfway through the season, they were in fourth. So they would be one of the higher up teams. So it is a bit annoying that I've missed them. But I don't know how I missed Germany, man. Jesus. Unbelievable. I don't believe it. France, at the end of the season, but not by points, by goal difference, by Four goal difference uh, over Italy have won it back to back. Absolutely crazy. And what's even more crazy is that the top four 
in this video is the exact same order as the top four in the last video. France, Italy, Spain, Belgium. Even without Germany in here. Uh, if Germany were in here and Germany came fifth, it would be the exact same all the way down to Brazil. It would be the top six would have been the same if, if Germany had been in this experiment and if Germany had taken fifth, which is a big if, but could have happened. The top six would have been exactly the same with then England, instead of coming eighth, they would have come seventh if Germany had knocked them down. And then Argentina's up there as well. They struggled in the last video. They came 11th, so they've overperformed. Portugal were seventh in the last video. So they're sort of where they were. But like, that's crazy. The top four is in the exact same order. Not just the same teams in the top four, the exact same order. France, Italy, Spain, Belgium. However, this time around, it is a lot more points. I mean, last time around, fourth had, I think, 82 or 83 points. That was Belgium. This time they have 92. Fifth, who was Germany in the last video, had 80 points, I think it was, or 81, 80 to somewhere around there this time fifth has 91 and then there's a massive drop down to england in 80 so the top five are, are miles ahead of the rest of the game the difference between portugal and brazil which is eighth to fifth is 20 points so you can see that there is a big gap france with 99 points italy with 99 points identical win draw loss record but france slightly better attacking slightly better defensive and that is exactly what gives them the edge over Italy, who have fought very, very hard there to knock France off their perch. They got 99 points. Last time around, that would have been France. France got 97 points last time. But this time, 99 points is not enough. France win it. With Spain, the best attacking team, sitting in third. So they get bronze, I guess, if this was like the Olympics. Belgium, they got 92 points. Good on them. Four losses, so the least losses in the league and the tied best defensive record with France. Brazil, 91 points. Last time, 91 points got your second. This time, it gets your fifth. Unfortunate for Brazil. And then looking towards the bottom, Peru picking up four wins in the remaining half of the season. Put Ireland right at the bottom with Egypt picking up seven wins. Good on them. Mexico, I think, are the one. And Chile and even Colombia, actually, while I'm at it. Uh, all underperforming in my opinion. I'd say the most overperforming team was Greece. I got nothing against Greece here, but 13th uh, ahead of the likes of Chile, Colombia, and Mexico. Sort of the best of the rest after the top 12, Greece. And, and that's a little bit surprising for me to see that. Poland jumped up to ninth. Typical Poland fashion. They, they seem to always do well in my experiments. Ninth in the previous video as well, by the way. So Poland overperform. I don't know why, but Robert Lewandowski must be doing something right. Anyway, speaking of Robert Lewandowski, he doesn't feature in our top 15 here. So maybe he's not doing something right. No one from the Poland team features here. It's a team effort from Poland. Taking a look at the top goal scorers, Dimitri Payet. Last time, 18 goals. This time, 23 goals. He does take the golden boot this time. Last time, it was Mesut Ozil, who doesn't feature in the top 15 because Germany weren't in the experiment. My bad, again. Uh, Insigne, 21 goals. He didn't even feature in the top 15 last time. So good on him. 21 goals for him. Roberto Firmino, 19 goals. Again, another one that didn't even feature in the top 15, so a lot of players getting their just dues in today's video. Perotti for Argentina, 18 goals. Last time he featured in the top 15 with, I think, 15 goals himself. Vardy is a new entry with 17 goals for England. Good on him. Last time, it was uh, Harry Kane was leading England's top goal scorers. He had 15, so Vardy outdoing him. Wijnaldum for Netherlands, another... Netherlands didn't even have anyone in the top 15 last time, but 16 goals for Genie Wijnaldum. Good effort from him. Lukaku from Belgium, 16 goals as well for him. Tosun for Turkey, 16 goals. I think they're both new entries. Last time, I think Belgium's was Drews Mertens, I think. Uh, Ronaldo for Portugal. Finally, one of the big players is in the top fifth. Well, I would say finally. It's only been two videos. But last time, we didn't have Ronaldo, Neymar, or Messi feature in the top 15, let alone the likes of Suarez or, or Lewandowski. Again, we don't have Lewandowski. They didn't feature in our top 15. It was very fringe players, players you wouldn't expect from their nations uh, being the main guys. So this time we have Ronaldo. We have Christo... Chris... Chris... Christo... Christo... Dolop... I can get this. I know I can get this. It's Christo Dolopoulos. Christo Dolopoulos 
for Greece, 15 goals. Chalanoglu for Turkey, 15 goals. A Suarez is in here as well. I didn't even see Suarez before. 14, Diego Costa, 14, Eriksen, 14, and Neymar just slides in there. So we got Ronaldo, Suarez, and Neymar this time, uh, which really does show that Messi probably should be doing, doing a little bit better for Argentina. I'm sure he could muster up 14 goals in the season. Poor form, Leo. Poor form. Anyway, in terms of assists, Harry Kane, 18 assists miles ahead of Dries Mertens. Harry Kane must be taking corners. That's the only thing I can think of. Uh, Dries Mertens for Belgium, he picked up 12 with Insigne and Van Ginkel, 10 apiece. Suarez up there with nine. Perotti with nine. So what a campaign from Perotti. Deli Ali had nine as well. Gervinho for the Ivory Coast with eight, along with Daniel Vass, Alexis Sanchez, Paulinho, Cochran, and Mohamed Salah. Falcao with seven for Colombia and nine Golan, seven for Belgium. In terms of the clean sheet and the goalkeepers, last time we had this epic battle uh, between Chesney and Lloris, with Chesney actually getting more clean sheets despite France losing a handful of games, having the best defensive record. Poland just, like I said, they, they came ninth, similar, uh, exact same as today's video. But they had one more clean sheet. They had 19 clean sheets last time, Paul. And this time it's down to 14 with Chesney in second. Lloris claims the perch today. He takes it back from Chesney and says, no, you know what? It was a fluke. I got this, France. Last time he had 18 clean sheets. It's dropped off to 17. But he does take the golden glove, Hugo Lloris, along with France's championship. And France's golden boot. France almost doing a clean sweep. If they'd taken the assists... They would have won everything. Uh, like I said, Chesney in second, just one clean sheet ahead of Muslera, who last time only had eight clean sheets. Akinfi for Russia, picking up 11, with, along with Talavera, who I'll be honest, I've never heard of. Uh, Bravo and Edison all picking up 11. Gianluigi Donnarumma picking up 10. As you can see, he was sharing his goalkeeping duties with Gianlu Gianluigi Buffon, who picked up seven clean sheets. So 17 clean sheets all up for Italy. If they had played one goalkeeper, they would have been up there with France. Uh, Butland picking up eight in the middle of that little Italian sandwich, I guess you can call it. Carnesis for Greece, along with Jonsson, Lopez, and Kepa Arizabalaga for Spain, all picking up seven. Why was Kepa Arizabalaga playing for Spain? you'd have to ask Spain. And then McGregor for Scotland, picking up six clean sheets as well. That's it. That is the end of today's experiment. And that is unfortunately the end of our international league uh, adventure here, because I did say earlier in the video, once we get a back-to-back -back winner, we'll stop. And I didn't think it'd be today, because I didn't think France would do it again, but we did have back-to-back -back winners. And it seems like the experiment went very similar to last time. Um, teams coming in the exact same positions, the top four, uh, Poland, it, it was a little bit too similar. I think if Germany were in there, they would have come fifth, and I think, I think it would have been very, very similar, and I do think that maybe with the international teams, they're set to a certain order. I could be wrong, because I don't know, and who knows what EA's done and how, how the simulating works, but it does seem like there is sort of, you could sort of tell that it would be like this. Maybe some spots would change, but it would be very similar every single time, so I think it's done. I think two, two videos for, for the same experiment is not bad either. I think I've milked this as much as I can. Um, but if you guys have any ex uh, FIFA 18 experiment suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. Moving forward, I have mentioned this. I mentioned this in the last video, and I think the next video will probably be on this subject. I will be talking about the things that I would like to see in FIFA 19 career mode. They're going to be all about FIFA 19, and I'm going to start making some videos about FIFA 19 and the things that can be improved as well. Today's poll, quick little poll in the top right corner. When the World Cup DLC drops, do you want to see content in the World Cup uh, mode? I'm assuming the answer will be yes. Uh, so I have to think of some things to do. Uh, but I'm just asking, I'm just gauging. Do you guys want to see the World Cup DLC on the channel? Let me know in the top right and vote and have your voice be heard. Thank you so much for watching today's video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope you had a good day. I will see you guys in the next one very soon. Keep it real.